Now, here's the definition for acid. If you bought the PPT slides a while ago, there's a typo here. Uh, it should be an acid. I think I had base here. You know, sometimes your brain just doesn't work. So an acid is something that produces, releases, or donates a hydrogen ion. So that's the key. Anything that can release a hydrogen ion in an aqueous solution is probably an acid. And what happens is the hydrogen can come off the chemical and becomes a cation in the solution. And remember, a cation is something, is a positive ion, right? And hydrogen ion is a positive. Um, there are some examples of acids, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, all of these things can produce a hydrogen ion. So these are actually pretty strong acid. Um, a strong acid is something that can completely disassociate in the solution and releases uh, hydrogen ion, right? So for example, hydrochloric acid, that's a very strong acid. I used to do a lot of lab work, right? Working with very strong um, acids and bases. And um, I had to be very careful when I deal with them because they're very strong, very corrosive, and you don't want any of the acid to get on your skin or get into your eye. A weak acid is something that partially disassociates. Because it only partially disassociates, it doesn't release as much hydrogen ion, right? So that's why it's a weak acid. Now, a very common example of a weak acid is acetic acid. And that's really just the vinegar that you use in your kitchen. We often, we often associate acids with something sour, right? And the sour taste is due to the receptors in your taste buds. Um, if you have taken anatomy and physiology class, right, when we talk about the taste buds, those receptors will respond to hydrogen ion. And a signal gets generated, and once that signal reaches your brain, your brain interprets that as a sour taste. So that's why acids or something acidic will give you that sour taste. Okay, now a base produces, releases, and donates hydroxide ion. OH with a negative charge, that's hydroxide ion. Now, good example, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, these are actually ingredients that we use to make a soap. Uh, and ammonia, it's a basic or alkaline, and that's because it absorbs hydrogen ion and becomes NH4 with a positive uh, charge. So, and that becomes ammonium ion. So ammonia is a little bit special. Uh, it's a little bit different than these chemicals, right? Because they can actually release uh, hydroxide ion. But ammonia is basic because it can, it can directly take away hydrogen ion from the solution, right? As opposed to release hydroxide ion, and then hydroxide ion reacts with a hydrogen ion. A good example of a strong base is potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, this can completely disassociate, right, and then release that hydroxide ion. So it's pretty strong. Um, good examples of things that are basic or alkali in daily life are soap, cleaners, baking soda, cleaners like a bleach. That's very basic. Now, bases usually produce a bitter taste. Uh, don't taste any of these things. I wouldn't recommend that. But uh, bases do have that bitter taste. Now, here's something that you probably see a lot. Uh, people use these kind of uh, color schemes to represent the pH scale. Now, uh, you can see the pH goes from 0 to 14, right? 7 is neutral. And anything that's less than 7, that's considered acidic. And anything greater than 7, that's considered basic or alkaline. All right, now the further you are away from that seven, that neutral line, the more acidic or more basic you are. Uh, if you move away from seven to smaller numbers, that will be more acidic. And likewise for the basic range, right? The higher the number you get, the more basic the solution is. Now keep in mind that the pH is on a log scale. So everything, whenever you see one number difference, that's actually 10 times difference in hydrogen ion concentration. So for something that has a pH of three and P 
pH of 4. First, I'm going to ask you which one is more acidic. And the answer is the smaller number, right? Because it's further away from the neutral number of 7. So pH of 3 is more acidic. Now, something that's more acidic has more hydrogen ions, right? Higher concentration of hydrogen ion. So what's the difference between these two solutions in terms of hydrogen ion concentration? Solution one that has a pH of three is going to have 10 times more hydrogen ion than solution two. And again, that number difference, one translates to 10 times difference in hydrogen ion concentration. Um, I have a, a, a bullet point here. I don't think these will ask you to do any calculations, like calculate the pH of a solution. But um, maybe just know that um, the pH scale is on the log scale. So the numbers that you see here, right, when you convert back to the log scale, the actual hydrogen concentration is 10 times for each number difference. All right, the next topic is about buffers. Now, students have told me that they have seen questions on buffers on T's. So I would suggest, you know, be sure that, you know, what buffers are, how buffers work, and some of the common buffer compounds in the body. Buffers can keep a solution's pH constant, right? It may fluctuate a little bit, but it's not going to change very much. So that's what buffers do, right? They basically help the solution resist any big pH changes. Buffers do that by absorbing any excess hydrogen ion or hydroxide ion. And I have some examples here. We all know carbon dioxide, which is a metabolic product, right, from cellular respiration. When we break down glucose to extract the energy, it produces carbon dioxide. And the blood will transport carbon dioxide from your tissues, your cells, to the lungs, where it can be exhaled. Now, we don't want to accumulate too much carbon dioxide because it can make our body more acidic. Carbon dioxide can dissolve in water, and that produces carbonic acid. And acid, right? So, of course, it's going to release a hydrogen ion. So you can see it can release hydrogen ion in two steps, right? First, it can disassociate, becomes one hydrogen ion and one bicarbonate ion. And this bicarbonate ion can further disassociate, right? Because it still has that one hydrogen. So it can release another hydrogen ion and carbonic ion. But bicarbonate ion, which is this compound right here, is a perfect buffer in our body. Because this ion has the ability to react with both hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion. So it can react with hydrogen ion, and that will push the equilibrium to the left. And then you get to carbonic acid. And this compound as a whole, right, um, when it doesn't release any hydrogen ion, this is neutral. Okay, so you can see bicarbonate ion can reduce that acidity. Now, on the other hand, there's a hydrogen right here in the bicarbonate ion. So these two can react, right? It basically just neutralizes each other. So you get uh, carbon ion and water, and that's also neutral, right? So if there's too much hydrogen ion or hydroxide ion, then bicarbonate can react with either one, right? And then kind of absorb that change from uh, too much acidity or too much alkalinity. There is another important buffer in our body, and that's a phosphate. So that's a PO4. Um, neutralization reactions are pretty straightforward, right? So you have a hydrogen ion reacting with hydroxide, and the end product is water. Now here's an example. Sodium hydroxide reacts with sulfuric acid, and basically you just do a little switch, right? And sodium is going to switch partners. Now it's going to form a family with, with a sulfate ion. So now you get sodium sulfate and then hydroxide with hydrogen that's going to become water. In the T-study manual, I noticed something that's not very accurate. Um, when equal moles of acid and base are used, the system becomes neutral with a pH of 7. I think the, the more accurate way is to say, equal moles of a hydrogen ion and a hydroxide ion, right? Because, you know, sometimes 
and acid can carry two hydrogen ions, right? So if you have, let's say, sulfuric acid and the base is sodium chloride, then you're gonna have too many um, hydrogen ions, right? So it's not gonna be neutral, it's gonna be a little bit acidic. On the other hand, if you have, let's say, uh, hydrochloric acid, right? But then you have uh, calcium hydroxide. Now you have twice as much hydroxide ion, right? Than hydrogen ion. So the end result, if you have equal mole of each, then the solution is going to be a little bit more basic. Uh, it's just something that I want to point out. I don't think it's something that you have to memorize. Just to make sure that the hydrogen ion and, and the hydroxide ion, they have to have equal moles, right? Not the entire acid or base chemical. Okay, now let's do some practice. Which of the following substances is an acid? Anything that can release a hydrogen ion, right? That's an acid. But sometimes it can get tricky. Not everything that has a hydrogen can release that hydrogen as an ion. So for example, gases, like a methane gas, CH4, it's not gonna you know, dissolve in a solution and release a hydrogen ion. Um, the carbon hydrogen forms a very strong covalent bond. So nothing is going to disassociate from this, com from this compound. Hydrogen, this is also a gas under normal condition. And that's also a very strong covalent bond between the two hydrogen atoms. So it's not going to dissolve in water and release hydrogen. So the correct answer is B. Now, A and C... These two gases um, actually can dissolve in water, right? And that will generate acid. This can uh, react with the water and that will generate sulfuric acid. And then for carbon dioxide, you already know, right? Carbonic acid. But I think this question is about what is an acid without further reaction with the water. So the correct answer is B. Okay, next question. Typically, if you have a metal element with um, OH, that indicates that this is probably a base, right? Like a lithium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, right? Um, aluminum hydroxide. So these things, like if you have uh, some kind of metal with um, OH, that's probably a base. And also A, ammonia, that's also a base. Next question. Um, this is about soapy water, ammonia, and bleach. And you know that they're all basic. So if they're basic, their pH is going to be greater than 7. Okay. Now, B is not correct because bleach can be very basic. I can't remember the exact pH, probably around 10, 11, 12 in that range. So it's not going to be close to 7. Um, they can neutralize a hydrogen ion. So if you change that to a hydrogen ion, that would be correct. Okay. All right, next question. This is a practice for a neutralization reaction. Now, in this case, you just switch partners, right? 
Uh, hydrogen is going to partner with hydroxide ion, and that's going to generate water. And magnesium is going to partner with sulfate. So now you get magnesium, sulfate, and water. So you need to balance the chemical reaction. First thing that comes to your mind is probably this hydrogen, right? The hy there, there are four hydrogen atoms, um, but there's there's only two in water, right? So you need to uh, double that. And magnesium and uh, sulfate ion, they're totally fine. They just um, have that number one. That's that's good, right? You don't need to add any number. So this is balanced. Now, which one is false? Um, a is correct, it is a neutralization reaction. B, the reactants are what's on the left side of the chemical reaction, so that's correct. And they are reacting in equal molar quantity, right? They're both, they, they have the same number in front of them, which is one. But remember in chemical reactions, if it's one, we don't usually write out. C, magnesium hydroxide acts as a base, that's also correct. Um, last one, uh, sulfuric acid acts as a buffer. No, it acts as an acid right, in this neutralization reaction. All right, that's the end. Good job, guys. Uh, we just finished another lesson. And like I said, this is pretty much the last chemistry lesson. So we are almost there. Uh, thank you for watching, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. So feel free to leave a comment, share the video, subscribe to this channel. Uh, thank you for all your support. Uh, we'll see you next time.